Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Ehler, Dean of Southeastern University's Barnett College of Ministry and Theology and Professor of Practical Theology. I did my dissertation on the study of preaching. In fact, it was called Preach to Reach. What is it that makes a difference between preaching that is effective at leading unbelievers to faith in Christ from that that isn't? I found several different principles. I had the privilege of teaching preaching now for 13 years to well over a thousand different students. And I found several things about preaching. And one of them is the word the word preach that we see in the New Testament is the Greek word kerux, and it's the idea of a herald, that person who goes into town and says, hear ye, hear ye, here's the news, and news is new by definition. It's something that the listeners hadn't heard before, and really our goal in preaching is to help people see something new, although most people in most pews in America have been listening to preaching a long time, even though we always hope there are those who are hearing it for the first time. But if you want to take a look at what I really believe the goal of preaching is in any case it is to take that unchanging authoritative Word of God we find in Scripture but communicate it in a way that is first of all understandable second of all memorable thirdly actionable and fourthly motivating to listeners in today's world because they're living in an ever-changing world and the reality they're in is always going to be changing that's why we can't simply replay sermons from a hundred years ago or even ten years ago or even last year because the situations we face are constantly changing and so this is what we call the process of contextualization. And of course, that process starts by understanding Scripture. We need to remember that Scripture was written by different individuals to different people or groups of people at a certain place in time in a certain situation. So to be able to understand that message, we have to go through that process of interpretation, often called hermeneutics. And we, we go through that process first as we seek the meaning of the message of the text that we're going to communicate. And let me encourage you, whenever you preach, have a single message you want to say. Ideally, something you can write down into a single sentence. Haddon Robinson called it the big idea. Others call it the sermon thesis. I like to call it the sermon thread. What's the one thing that is going to tie everything else together in your sermon? That means you don't share everything you find or discover in your own study about a biblical text. You only study those things that are going to help your people, again, remember what it is that they've heard. Now, we need to be sure that it's true to the text. So once you've done your study, you find that principle that transcends that was both true to your original listeners, but also be true to your listeners today. And then find a way to communicate it that meets those four criteria that I mentioned. One is it's understandable. Use words they're going to understand. Ideas that they can relate to. You may need to do some explanation of the biblical background or setting, but do it in a way that's going to be understood by them. Sometimes using metaphors and images can help people get get things that they wouldn't be able to understand otherwise. Then next is to make it memorable. Find a way to trigger the memory where later on they can hear it ringing in their ears. Sometimes it's repetition of a, of a single buzz phrase you'll use over and over again. Or maybe an imagery or an idea, a metaphor, a story. Uh, some people like to use alliteration where everything starts with the same letter or an acronym where it spells something at each of those main points along the way. But don't make it too complicated. Again, make it where they can remember it. And then next, make it actionable, something they can go put into practice in their life. Be sure that it is relevant to them in their world. You, know, you don't want to just say, okay, God judged Jonah because he had a bad attitude. So what? What do I care about that? Jonah lived 3,000 years ago. That's not my world today. How about God has words for people with attitude issues? Ooh, okay, that applies to me sometimes. I do have attitude issues. Okay, what can I learn from how God dealt with Jonah and how Jonah responded? Now I see the relevance. So make sure it's relevant to your listeners, but they also know what to do. You can do that from the old standard... Uh, gospel altar call, have them come to the front of the church, raise their hands, look at you, or even think it to themselves, but give them a chance. Maybe give them some examples of others who put it into practice. Which leads to that fourth thing, make it motivating. And sometimes stories of people who've experienced a life change of Jesus can help motivate people to respond to your message, to your invitation, but also be motivated to go out and live out the principle, whatever it is, wherever they go later in their life. So at any rate, along the way, stay true to the text itself, but be sure it's relevant for your listeners and communicate it in a way that's going to motivate them to live the changed life, to respond to the message of Jesus that will be understandable and, and memorable and relevant to their situation wherever they are, that they can live the changed life that Jesus wants them to have.
God bless you in your preaching.